Well, thank you very much, uh, Bruce. It's a great pleasure for me to be able to join with you tonight to launch uh, what I think is a very significant and exciting initiative. Uh, can I acknowledge uh, your chair, Professor Colin Power, and Director Bruce Muirhead. Uh, can I also acknowledge Ken Smith, the Director General of the uh, Department of Education and the Arts, Vice Chancellors Professor Ian O'Connor and Bill, Professor Bill Lovegrove. Uh, and can I also acknowledge those people who are here representing the sponsors of the event from Bendigo Bank and Delphin Lend Lease and uh, the Asia Pacific Educational Research Association. Uh, I think the real, one of the great strengths of this project is the great partners that it has. So thank you for the, uh, the work you've done to make today possible. Well, we're here tonight to launch uh, both a new name and a, a new charter for an organisation that's been in existence for some time in, or for a short time in Queensland. Anybody who's been associated with public policy in even a peripheral way in the last few years will know that uh, this area, like all others, has its fads and trends, and one of the emerging buzzwords in public policy in the last five years has been uh, the, the term evidence-based practice and evidence-based policy. I've been a great fan of the predecessor to IDOS, uh, the Institute for Educational Research and Policy Evaluation, or IERP as it was fondly known. Uh, this organisation conducted the external evaluation of the trials of the new preparatory year of education in Queensland. Uh, I was very pleased when they were able to advise government after ex extensive evaluation uh, that we were on the right track and that children are better prepared for school after participating in the prep year. It's an internationally recognised evaluation and what it did was add legitimacy to the idea of a PrEP and along with a range of feedback that had been gathered internally within the department from the trial schools themselves, it gave us as a government the confidence to make the investment, a very substantial investment of public funds into the program and to make it universal and that will happen from 2007. So I wanted to acknowledge IOPI's role in that and uh, it had, was a very important reminder to me of the value of rigorous interdisciplinary research and the need for more of it. Most of you, of course, would know that IDOS uh, means idea or form of thinking, plan or creativity. Uh, we can see its origins in the Greek idone, which is to know or idea and to see. And from those words come not only the word idea, but also ideal and idealism. I'd suggest that an institute that aspires, as this one does, to social change, and social change for the better, that a heavy dose of idealism isn't a bad thing to have in the process. Uh, so I think that the portents are very good. Uh, I, it has been drawn to my attention, however, uh, that the words idiot, idiocy and idiosyncrasy uh, very, sit very close by in the dictionary. So um, let's not explore it too much. Uh, there's a lesson in there, I think. Uh, it's one thing to have an idea, but you need the research to know if it's a good one. Uh, today, here, or this evening, here in this wonderful gallery, uh, what we're really launching, I hope, is a powerhouse of ideas. Uh, Queensland is the highest growth rate in Australia. Uh, we have many, many challenges ahead of us as we and successive governments plan for that growth, ensure that it matches uh, the needs of a rapidly changing economy and meets the needs of young people, particularly who will be growing into a globalised world in a way that none of us can really understand. So the need for evidence-based policy, the need for good, strong research and high quality evaluation is very important. Can I just say one word on policy? I think it's sometimes too easy to, be, to see a policy as the end in itself. And good policy, in my view, is policy that's constantly evaluated to make sure that it's actually achieving the aims that those who put it in place had for it. And I certainly see that there'll be further need for some policy research and evaluation done in relation to the PREP year, as well as to many other uh, areas of government uh, policy shifts that are happening at the moment. This, the aspirations of this institute coincide perfectly with the aspirations of our government to make Queensland the smart state of Australia. And I'm pleased, pleased Colin, that you know it's about more than number plates, but you know I hope you've all got the right number plate. <laughs> it's got to come, you know, both ends. Ends. Uh, I know that today's activities have been a very, um, I, I think, a very important part of launching the institute, and that uh, it has seen a great deal of um, clever thinking, and uh, in some cases, some very amusing outcomes. I do know that, um, as was alluded to, people were challenged. So it's a standard kind of policy challenge, really, to uh, 
put people in a lift hypothetically with the Prime Minister and the Premier and uh, suggest to them that apart from panicking, uh, what would they say to them and what, how would they get the ideas across as quickly as they can? And I suggest that uh, given um, the relationship between our current Prime Minister and Premier, it might be just as interesting to stay very quiet and listen because <laughs> I'd be interested in being a fly on the wall if they were stuck in a lift together. Uh, but I hope that what this institute is about and what it becomes is uh, an institute that will give us the basis and form the bedrock of opportunities for us to transform.